Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. On a spring break holiday, a group of friends is having a blast on the beaches of Mexico. There are five friends, Nat and her boyfriend Tom, Nat's best friend Millie, and two other friends, Tyler and Greg. They are having a great time together that night when suddenly the drinks run out, and they play spin the bottle to decide who has to go buy more. Nat is chosen, and she leaves to get more drinks. Before she goes, she sits on a step to send a message to her mother and sister. Suddenly, a wheelchair-bound homeless man approaches her and asks for some spare change. After giving him some money, Nat notices his amputated legs, and he explains that it was a great white shark that did that. Her friends show up, and the man keeps insisting about the shark story. As they are leaving, he even grabs Nat's arm, repeating to be careful, but then he leaves. As the day breaks, the friends are leaving the party area to go home when Tom notices two jet skis docked and gets the stupid idea to break into the cabin where the keys are kept, taking advantage of nobody working that day. After discreetly taking the jet ski keys, they place their shoes by the water with their cell phones inside. The girls also arrive, but upon seeing that, Nat becomes very apprehensive, remembering what the wheelchair-bound man had told her earlier. However, after some insistence from her best friend Millie, Nat ends up agreeing to join the madness, and the five of them take off on the warm waters of the Mexican beaches. Millie brings her cell phone and films all their insane fun, performing various maneuvers and getting excited. However, they venture too far from the coast, and after passing by a sailboat, at one point they start doing dangerous maneuvers, which scares Nat, who shouts for them to come back immediately. The idiots do it once, but the second time they miscalculate the distance and end up colliding one jet ski with the other, throwing two of them off. It's an agonizing moment for them as they realize this game didn't turn out well at all. Greg ends up with a broken leg, which can easily attract unwanted predators to them through the blood. Millie panics because she can't swim well, so Tom goes to her and helps her, while Nat goes to Greg and calms him down as he screams in pain. Soon they realize that Tyler is missing. As one of the jet skis is sinking, they see Tyler unconscious, so Tom goes to him and saves him, and then they all cling to the only remaining jet ski that hasn't sunk yet. They manage to put Greg on top and superficially take care of his badly injured leg. Millie checks her cell phone for a signal but unfortunately finds none. Now, the five friends, after this crazy game, are adrift far from the coast and with one of them severely injured. Meanwhile, at the waterfront, their shoes along with their other cell phones are carried away by the rising tide, leaving no clues. In the sea, they decide to take Greg to a hospital, but they must leave two of them behind because they won't all fit on the jet ski. So Tyler and Millie will stay behind while they take Greg to the hospital. However, when Tom tries to start the engine, he is unpleasantly surprised to find out that it's not working. In an attempt to fix it, they briefly remove Greg from the jet ski, causing him more pain and injury. Tom examines the engine and realizes that he doesn't have the tools to open it and identify the problem. Feeling discouraged, they put Greg back on the jet ski and ponder what they can do next. At the waterfront, a worker arrives to clean the beach, and from a distance, we see a reflection, which is Nat using her cell phone. However, I believe that even if someone sees it, it wouldn't make a difference, as it would likely be ignored. In a certain moment, Greg, dying of thirst, tries to drink seawater but spits it out immediately. At that moment, Nat, who had Millie's cell phone, discovers that her boyfriend Tom was cheating on her with her best friend Millie. She finds some photos and conversations about their night together during the act of betrayal. Tom, realizing that Nat is seeing this, panics and tries to take his cell phone back, but Nat refuses to hand it over, and it ends up falling into the water. Nat yells at both of them, expressing her trust in them and how they betrayed her. Tom dives into the water to retrieve the cell phone. Millie tries to justify her actions by claiming she was drunk, but Nat doesn't want to hear any excuses. Now, in addition to the tension and agony of being stranded miles from the coast, they are all in a heavy mood due to the discovery of the betrayal between boyfriend and friend time passes, and Greg, having lost a significant amount of blood, appears to be getting worse. Tyler mentions the sailboat he saw while they were performing dangerous maneuvers. He believes the boat might still be between them and the coast, so he decides to swim and see if he can find it and ask for help. However, just a little over 50 meters away, Millie sees a shark fin in the water heading towards Tyler, and everyone starts screaming for him to notice, but Tyler can't hear them. The shark approaches him, but suddenly its fin disappears beneath the water. 
The friends are unsure where it went, and then, drawn by Greg's blood, the shark passes close to the surface near them, frightening everyone. Tom, out of fear, desperately tries to climb onto the jet ski but ends up knocking everyone off into the water. They are now experiencing tense moments, knowing that beneath them is a huge shark from those waters, and it could pull them down at any moment, the shark circles around the friends, but its target is clear. Due to the amount of blood Greg is losing, he inevitably becomes the prey. The greatest despair begins as it doesn't take long before the shark grabs Greg's legs and starts pulling him. In that moment, Nat hooks her hair onto Greg's wristwatch and gets dragged along with him. Tom and Millie helplessly watch their friends being taken towards death. The panic intensifies when the shark starts to descend, and Nat desperately tries to free herself to have a chance to escape. Fortunately, she manages to break free and resurfaces, reaching the jet ski and feeling slightly safer again. After some time, Millie tries again to get a signal on her cell phone, but it's futile as they are too far from the small city, which also has poor cell phone reception. Meanwhile, Tyler is still swimming, searching for help. Finally, he spots a boat in the distance and becomes ecstatic. He starts shouting to get the man's attention, but since he's far away, he goes unnoticed. Tyler swims closer to the boat, but he gets a big scare when a large shark fin passes right in front of him. Tyler immediately stops and becomes apprehensive. Following the correct protocol in a situation like this, he not only stops but also looks underwater around him to locate the shark because continuing to make splashes with his arms and legs at this time would only trigger the shark's attack instincts. However, things take a turn for the worse for Tyler because, in an unusual turn of events, after a superficial check to see if the predator was gone, Tyler is suddenly attacked and brutally dragged by the beast, leaving Tyler's side mangled. He screams in despair, calling for help from the oblivious man on the boat, who hears something but quickly ignores it and continues eating a sandwich. By this time, Tyler has already been dragged to the depths. Hours later, Nat, Tom, and Millie are under the scorching sun, and Millie wonders if anyone will miss them and come looking for them or if Tyler managed to find the boat to get help. As time passes, and due to intense thirst, Millie crouches to scoop up some seawater to drink, but Nat stops her, saying it would only make her more dehydrated. Tom tries again to fix the jet ski but fails. The hours go by, the sun sets, and night falls. Unable to swim for help due to their fear of the shark, the only option left for the three friends is to endure the cold night on the jet ski, adrift in the middle of the ocean. Later in the night, after being startled by strange movements in the water around the jet ski, a glimmer of hope to escape the situation appears when Nat notices a distant light and alerts her friends. They start screaming, but since they are several hundred meters away, they logically won't be heard. Nat quickly remembers to use the flashlight on her cell phone to try to get the boat's attention, but it seems they were not noticed even then. Nat suggests that one of them will have to swim to the boat to ask for help. With a lot of fear but wanting to show otherwise, Tom decides to go and immediately dives into the cold water. However, he doesn't get more than three meters away and quickly returns, scared, because he imagines the shark will get him. And who wouldn't be afraid in a situation like this, right? It depends on how much you have to risk, swimming in an ocean where you know there is a large shark that already took one of your friends. But anyway. Nat, thinking they couldn't miss that opportunity for help, decides to go to the boat herself. She enters the water slowly and swims, trying to make as little noise as possible with her feet and hands. However, as she gets closer to the light, she realizes it's actually just a life jacket with a person inside, who she turns to speak to, but she is greatly shocked to see that the person's head is completely mangled. Nat is overcome with terror and despair and tries to return to the jet ski in a disorganized manner. Tom and Millie, hearing her scream, decide to do something to help their friend. Amidst the meaningless flailing of feet and hands, Tom gets close to Nat and tries to bring her back, in a moment of great tension where a shark could easily emerge and grab both of them. Luckily, they manage to reach the jet ski, and Nat tells them what she saw, thinking that somehow the shark killed that man. The day dawns, Nat wakes up, looks around, and washes her face. Then she has the idea of lying down to look underwater when suddenly, looking deeper, the shark emerges and attacks. But relax, guys, it was just Nat's nightmare. She wakes up startled and also wakes up Millie and Tom. That's when they notice the corpse of the man, which is now very close to them. They realize there are some pieces of wood with the body, and Nat has the idea of picking them up and using them as oars to try to return to the coast, which is now even further away due to the tide that pushed them during the night. 
Nat also takes the life jacket from the body and gives it to her friend, who doesn't know how to swim. They start rowing, and after some time without seeing the coast, Millie starts lamenting, saying she is already exhausted due to dehydration and the intense sun they endured. Suddenly, while they are still rowing, the shark appears and attacks them due to the movement of the makeshift oars, giving them a tremendous scare. They watch attentively, and it seems the shark has gone away, but it resurfaces and bites the jet ski, also catching Tom's leg. Nat pierces the shark with the sharp side of the oar, and it retreats a bit. In desperation, the friends try once again to look at the jet ski's engine to see if they can understand the problem this time, while the shark starts to circle them. After diving and seemingly disappearing, the shark surprises them by coming up from below, causing the friends to fall into the water. The three of them are now an easy target for the shark, which grabs Tom and throws him up in the air, as they naturally do with their most common prey, seals. Tom screams in pain and knows that his chances of survival are almost zero now. Nat tries to help him and manages to bring him back to the jet ski, but Millie is still in the water, trying as best she can to reach her friends. Unfortunately, she is not so lucky because when she reaches the jet ski, before she can climb up, the shark grabs her and ferociously devours her from the waist down. Nat, in a daze, realizing there was no hope for her friend, releases her into the water, and she drifts away but is soon pulled under by the shark. After some time, Nat tries again to remove the rigid plastic box that covered the face of the jet ski's engine. She pulls harder and ends up breaking a part of the protective box, leaving a sharp piece. Finally, she manages to break the rest, and now she can see what happened to the engine that caused it to stop working. It turns out there was a fuel hose rupture. Tom is severely injured and cannot help her in any way, and he is almost unconscious. That's when Nat notices the life jacket that Millie was wearing and has the idea of using its inflation tube to fix the jet ski's fuel hose. Seeing no other alternative, she dives into the water to retrieve the life jacket, which is a bit far away. However, as she manages to grab it, she sees that the insatiable shark is heading towards Tom on the jet ski and drags him for a few meters. When it goes after Nat, being visible on the surface, Nat sees no choice but to try to defend herself and not die in vain at the hands of the shark. She arms herself with the piece of rigid plastic cover that had broken earlier from the jet ski's engine and at the right moment, she dodges and hits the shark. Tense moments for Tom, who watches helplessly, and now not seeing her anymore, he imagines that Nat has also been devoured and laments. However, to his surprise, she is still alive and manages to return and climb onto the jet ski, although she is now badly injured in her left arm. She finally manages to make an improvised connection with the tube and the two ends of the ruptured hose. Then she tries to start the jet ski, which only starts after several attempts, and they finally manage to move away from there. However, as the jet ski was damaged in other ways, it is not going fast enough, and the shark is still following them because it is insatiable. Then, unbelievably, it manages to break a piece of the plastic back of the jet ski, and as a result, it can no longer move forward due to the weight of Tom and Nat, and water starts to enter the part that keeps the jet ski afloat. That's when Tom, realizing they would be killed by the enraged shark, decides to sacrifice himself to give Nat a chance to escape, so he jumps into the water. Nat, not accepting this, tries to make him come back with her, but he is determined, and in the end, he is devoured by the shark, leaving no choice for Nat but to move forward and save herself. She does so, and even with the jet ski almost stopping due to the water still entering it, she manages to approach the coast, but in a different location. Due to several rocks in the water, the jet ski ends up colliding with one of them, causing Nat to fall into the water very close to the beach. She sees that she is just a little bit away from finally being free from that nightmare, and she exerts all her efforts with her severely injured arm to quickly reach the shore. As she sees the shark getting closer to her, attracted by her blood, she becomes desperate and tries to get out of the water while the shark approaches her more and more. Just as it is about to grab her, she narrowly escapes thanks to a rocky formation that she manages to pass through, but the shark gets trapped in it. With that, Nat finally steps on solid ground again, completely free from that terrible nightmare. She then moves forward, now trying to find help in that unfamiliar place.